Hello everybody, this is Nash Bennett for the SOU News, and today I'm here with Tabitha Wheeler, a digital cinema student here at SOU who is working on their digital cinema capstone project. Um, hi Tabitha, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm happy to be here. Hi, I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk about this. Just to kind of like um, get started, um, do you want to just tell us a bit about um, your background, just both as a student and just as a person? Yeah, so um, I started coming to SAU in 2018, and I was recruited to play soccer here, and it was like the only school I had looked at, and the coach was kind of like, oh, just come play, and I was like, all right, I guess this is where I'm going to college. Um, so then I came, joined Digital Cinema, and I had been super interested in making movies for a really long time. Like, it kind of started in elementary school where we had a class project learning iMovie, and I made, like, a little short called I'm a Witch and did the thing where you cut the camera and then you add something in and it's, like, magic. Um, and then kind of in the last year or so, I've taken a break from sports and just really focused on work and also this big capstone project. Um, and it's become kind of like the center of my life and basically everything that I have been focusing on this last year. So I'm very excited about it. Cool. Cool. Yeah. It seems like you're uh, really like going above and beyond with it from what I've heard. Thank Um, you. (laughs) So yeah. um, And do you want to just like quickly kind of explain what a digital cinema capstone project requires? Sure. You know, honestly, I'm not entirely sure because we all are kind of doing super different things. Um, it is a three term capstone, which kind of makes it different than a lot of other majors, I think. Um, and usually there's some people who are doing narratives, like they write an original short and then, um, produce it by the end of the year. There's other people who write full series or write one feature length something and don't produce it. Um, and then there's other people who bring in scripts already written, produce those, or do other things like um, we have someone doing video essays, we have someone doing um, instructional videos for a certain business, and so um, and then there's other people, of course, who just take on crew roles and don't have projects of their own, but are kind of bouncing around from crew to crew, making sure all the other projects happen and have big roles in each of those. So it kind of is just this huge collaborative effort to just kind of be our own production company and kind of pump out all of these big projects every year for Capstone. So um, it's definitely a very interesting Capstone experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, And so your project is a film called The Lost Years of Shakespeare. Do you want to tell us a bit about what that is and what your role in it is and just kind of like how it all uh, came to be? Yeah, so um, I started out being super interested in writing something that had to do with a mystery. Like, if it was a mystery, I was good. I love action-adventure. And so that was kind of what I wanted to start with. And then that turned into this big, long story incorporating um, the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and Ashland Springs and having it based in Ashland with a bunch of people from Ashland. Um, And the story kind of follows along. It's partly fictional, partly... um, partly based on real history, kind of like if you've ever seen National Treasure, kind of similar to that where the storyline is fictional, but some of the artifacts are for real. <laughs> right. Um, so basically what happens is it's the 80th anniversary of the Shakespeare Festival's charity gala. So all the rich people who donate to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival come and enjoy champagne and have these elated conversations and kind of talk about, you know, Shakespeare and the festival and those kinds of things. Um, And then meanwhile, in the coat room, there is a young woman named Tisa who ends up finding a secret passageway at the back of the coat room that leads to a hidden staircase. And basically, this hidden staircase is from the original build of the Ashen Springs Hotel before it was the Ashen Springs Hotel, like kind of back in the 1920s when it was originally built. And, um, And at the top of it, there's this window that is a one way mirror into a hotel room. So our main character finds this window and ends up overhearing this conversation between a couple who's kind of in this heated argument, and they're plotting to steal this Shakespearean dagger from the festival because it leads to <laughs> it leads to this lost treasure, um, and it's kind of this family heirloom. And um, yeah, I don't know if that really goes from beginning to end, but there's kind of a lot of different moving pieces. And I guess the most important part is that. It's based in Ashland, and it's a mystery, and there's secret passageways and stuff like that. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, I think it's it's yeah. cool to kind of incorporate 
you know, I know one thing like they talk about is just using like in the decent classes is talking about like um, using what you the, the surroundings you're already kind of like um, you already have access to and things like that. And so right. um, basing it around Ashland is like really cool. Um, and I think people in the area will love to see it as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I heard that you guys also were doing some crowdfunding for this project. Do you want to talk about how that was and kind of where you guys are at with all that? Yeah, so we launched a campaign on Indiegogo back in the middle of March. And it actually closed on April 14th, but we made our goal. So now we're kind of in this in-demand phase, which I guess is a thing that the platform does where if you make your goal by your deadline, then you get to stay open and kind of continue to accept donations um, and then you can pull from that at any time kind of thing so that's kind of where we are now we've actually exceeded our goal by almost a thousand dollars at this point um so it went like crazy successful definitely <laughs> like we started our goal is six thousand and now we're almost at seven thousand and um yeah people have been just so supportive of it like i really have not gotten a lot of no's um i think that you know, I was expecting a lot of no's, especially for these big locations. But I mean, it seems like everyone's just really excited about it and willing to participate. And, you know, we've gotten $5 here, $10 here. And then we've also gotten some of the bigger donations that have really helped us achieve that goal. And, you know, now that we have this big budget, we can really make all these really cool things that we've planned to have happen, happen. And I think that's the most exciting part is just to have so many names attached to it. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And are, are you guys going to like film at the Ashland Springs Hotel and stuff like did, did you get like permission to film yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, oh, so cool. yeah, we're shooting in their English Garden and that's kind of where the the big gala is going to take place and then the Schneider Museum is donating a vitrine and pedestal for us to stick the dagger into this like display case um back there. So it's going to be really pretty and super formal. Um everyone's wearing black tie with these like floor length dresses and suits and those kinds of things. Cool. Um and then we've also gotten permission to shoot in the Alan Elizabethan Theater to really mm -hmm. sell that it's happening at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Um so yeah, it's actually kind of mind blowing. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. There's like a lot of a lot of a lot to it and you guys got a lot of um great opportunities there. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy. It's been a lot of work <laughs> yeah. to get to this point, but it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, and that kind of leads into my um, like next question. So, did you guys uh, like what what was kind of the pre production process like? Kind of reaching out to these people and gathering who was going to be on your crew and all that. Right. So, um, I think you know because Capstone is only the three terms. Um, you know, there was a lot of pressure to start reaching out to people super fast. And I didn't even have in fall term, you know, a final copy of the script um, and things like that. But I was already reaching out to these locations um, way back in August through November and kind of just to get like a tentative yes or no kind of feel out the situation. And then um, it was a lot of in winter term, literally just sitting down with a list of phone numbers and just calling, 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 calling. Um, we, I think, because majority of the things I did on my own because I wanted to produce it and direct it because I just really wanted to have like this big control factor <laughs> over the final totally. product. Yeah. Um, and then kind of as I started talking to people about what I was doing, if I felt like, you know, they were super interested and they asked to be a part of it or if somehow we clicked and had this really good working relationship, then I asked them to be a part of it or if I saw a specific talent in them. Um even that talent just being super passionate about filmmaking in one way or another, um, just reaching out to them and being like, Hey, like, are you interested in doing this part? Are you interested in doing that part? Um, and then just making sure that everyone who was involved in their role was equally as passionate about their role as I am about my role, just to make sure that, you know, cause once you start assigning people to things that they don't really want to be doing, that's kind of when it crashes and burns. Cause you know, no one's getting paid for this. It's all volunteer. Um, some people aren't even doing this for credits or for capstone. They're literally just like giving me their time. And so I've just been like extremely thankful to even have them be a part of it. And, um, but because of that, I also took on a lot of the more stressful, um, pre-production roles on because I didn't want that to fall onto anyone else because I didn't want to like scare them away. <laughs> so I, you know, spent a ton of time just 
making these calls, making these connections. If one person said no, going to a different person, you know, I just have this philosophy now that if you're, if someone's saying no, you're just asking the wrong person and kind of running with that. Um, and also I've never done this before. Like I have no idea what I'm doing and every single day I learn something new. And I honestly think that because this project is so massive, um, I just started to catch up all the COVID gap, um, just kind of all in one term. So, I mean, it's been crazy. It's been a lot of talking to people on the phone. <laughs> totally. And do you, um, I guess, kind of just a, a projection um, for those listening, do you do you know where people will be able to see this film once it's done and, and what the time frame for that might be? Yeah, so um, it's set to be completed by November of this year because um, even though we wrap up shooting in May and like the beginning of June, we might not get into the Alan Elizabethan until around August. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be out sooner than that. I'm not really sure, but I think um, outside from like a personal premiere, it would probably be at the next round of student film festivals. Um, and then of course through like my own personal social media, like I'll probably have a link for people and then whoever was a part of the crew will probably have a link themselves. So um, yeah, not super mainstream, but definitely, definitely trying to get it out there. Just to kind of wrap up, um, is there anything else you would like the people to know about your project um, or anything like that? Ooh, I think I think something that is really exciting about this project, because it's so based in Ashland, like so explicitly based in Ashland, um, we've actually created a pretty big partnership with the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and sent over like a script to make sure that we've represented the festival correctly and, you know, organizing stuff through their team like we're doing a a treasure hunt that is a fundraiser to raise money for the film that has closed its ticket sales now because we have a lot of people (laughs) probably too many people um yeah so that's a good problem to have but um we're kind of promoting their return as they start to open up their season their first season since covid um and then in turn they're kind of supporting us by just being like a a big name that we can kind of attach to our film and kind of almost put it in like a community service kind of arena um in a way and just kind of like you know look how cool and inspiring this festival is and all these cool things that it's connected to in Ashland um and you know outside of that the scene that we're shooting in the Allen Elizabethan will probably also be edited to turn kind of into another promotional piece for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival in the future because the beginning kind of hook of the episode is this big sword fight that takes place and it's supposed to resemble like you're so infatuated with the play going on in front of you that you're getting lost and you're literally being put in put onto this castle steps where they have these big swords and they're fighting and Mm-hmm. They have all their period clothing, and so so yeah. I think our partnership with with OSF is is super exciting. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's a great way to kind of you know get get people knowing about it, people that are familiar with the festival and become familiar yeah. with your your film. And um, so yeah, awesome. Well, I I I'm really excited. Um, I bet everybody listening to this is also really excited. Um, I think a lot of people, you know need to know about all the cool stuff that we produce here at SOU and all the, all the cool projects coming out. And, and yeah, um, yeah I, I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your project. All right. Thank you so much, Nash. 